What's going on, everyone? Charlie here. We're going to talk about something I shouldn't be talking about. And by the way, this is not financial advice. But however, um, I see it on a weekly basis, and you know we're just getting slaughtered on these calls. So I'm going to teach you how to sell calls using a real life example. I have an account that I have exactly 100 shares in, so I went ahead and sold a call today, so I can show you all how it works. And this is how to make money while holding your favorite stocks. Step one, accumulate shares. Now, this is something that most of us have already done. Now, if you happen to be new or if you haven't quite reached 100 yet, the first thing you're going to want to do is acquire at least 100 shares because that will allow you to start selling calls. Chances are, if you've been buying and holding AMC or GME all year, you have at least 100 shares, the amount needed to sell one contract. As we all know, 100 shares per contract is how options work, and it is what is required when selling calls. If you didn't have the underlying shares, that would be called a naked option, uh, which is level five options trading, which you probably don't qualify for. Um, however, in our case, retail with the actual shares, we want to make sure we're using real shares as collateral. Step two, earn premium for those shares for free. Now, I'm going to show you, using a personal example, how to sell calls and rake in premium. Now, this is not financial advice. This does not work 100% of the time. There is uh, identifiers that need to be used to make sure that you're um, selling calls appropriately. And because remember, as soon as you sell a call, if you don't watch it and that call goes against you and gets up to the strike price where you sold it, then your shares could be sold into the market at that price. That is the risk that you run. Okay, so selling the calls. Why would you even want to sell calls in the first place? Now, the purpose of selling calls is to make premium. Now, basically what that means is instead of falling for all this consecutive media hype, which is what this is all based around is hype. They try to get people to hype in, buy all these calls on the long side, ignore the short side, and then they rake in premium because instead of buying those calls, they're selling them and then they get free money. When you sell calls, the premium amount is the amount you sell the call for. So if, if the strike was at $200 and you sold two calls, <coughs> excuse me, if the strike price was at $200 and you sold one call at 78 cents per, per share, that's going to be $78 per sold contract, meaning $78 goes straight into your account and can be used instantly. Now, instead of debiting your account, you'll receive an instant premium after selling the call. It's the exact opposite of buying a call, is if I were to buy this call for 78 cents a share, it would cost me $78 out of my account instead of the other way around. So if you sold two calls at $200 today, you'd receive $156 in premium total that you can use whenever you want to buy back that call if it does start going against you. What's the risk? This is important. The risks, there's always risk involved with trading. Not having enough buying power, number one, left to repurchase the contract in the event the price starts to move is number one mistake people make. At first, I would highly recommend you do not touch the premium unless the call expires worthless because you will need that premium if you buy the, or you sell the call and then the price goes up and that call starts going up, you're going to have to spend money out of pocket to buy that back. So that's your risk. However, granted GameStop's lack of shares, liquidity, and volume, this is a very easy strategy to use after GameStop runs, especially after earnings. Now, if the strike price which you sell the call is breached, for example, if you sell a call at $200 and the price is at 180, you take a nap and you wake up and the, and the price is at $210. If the brokerage account hasn't already asked you to sell your calls into the market, you may have to do that. That is the risk you run. It's just the nature of the business. Now, the good thing, though, is if the strike price does go against you, the good news is, like, let, let's say you sell calls and then MOAS starts. Are you fucked completely? Absolutely not. Because you can buy that call back whenever you want. And if you're long, guess what? It's, it's going to mitigate your losses that you're paying out of pocket because you already made the difference on your long side. It's called hedging. So do this at your own risk. Uh, I would start small. You can you can sell calls very easily, way out of the money if you want, just like a couple bucks here and there a week, just to practice. But again, there is risk involved. This is why it's always smart to keep the collateral and a little cushion just in case the price goes up. Rule of thumb, I always like to keep the premium out, whatever you're going to get uh, as far as premium 
I would keep an extra 10% just in case the call goes against you. Because remember, you can buy it back anytime. You can also, if you want, set a stop limit price, meaning whenever the stop limit is reached, it converts into a limit order that you will set. So that's an, a tool that I highly recommend using. This is the one time that stops are okay on the short side because you need those in place. Now, if the price goes up, simply buy the call back using the premium. So let's say you bought or you sold the call at 78 cents and uh, you know it, it goes down to 50 cents, but then you start to see it rise back up to that 70 cent. You can go ahead and buy it back. You keep the difference. If the calls reach expiration and don't hit the strike price, you get to keep 100% of the premium. So let, let's say you bought a call at $650 and GameStop goes all the way up to $640. If that strike price doesn't hit $650, you still get to keep all that premium. So it's, it's a very, very good way to earn money and, and put your shares that you're holding to work because you're not moving them by selling calls. It's completely derivative based. You're not unsettling your shares when you sell them. You're merely, uh, it's like a side bet. Now, important note, since you're already long with the shares, if the solo call goes against you again, losses will be little to none. That's the beauty of hedging. Make sure you keep an eye on your sold calls as you are putting your shares up as collateral. So let's go through selling the actual calls. So how do we sell a call? Well, number one, we're gonna need to choose a strike price. How do we do that? We look at the open interest on the call side of the options chain. Now I have here on the screen, GameStop's call option chain. We can see that the open interest is stacked more so than others at three specific price points. That's 180, 195, and 200. I consider this the low risk, medium risk, and high risk setup here. So if you wanted to sell a call at 180, that's your highest risk. Why? That's the closest to the current price. If the price goes to 180, you may have to sell those shares and paper handout at 180. You still get the money for it, but you'd have to rebuy the shares. Now, Next level is 195, which will be the medium risk. It's a little further away. You get a little bit more premium or a little bit less premium than 180, but again, it's still fairly close. Then you see the 200. That would be the safest bet because we have the most open interest and the most volume. Now, volume is the changing of hands of contracts, meaning volume is retail, open interest is the market makers is the way I've always looked at it. And the higher the volume, especially if it's over the open interest, they're raking in premium. Um, and it seems to be the case that uh, volume is just slightly uh, under open interest lately, which again is just a, a sure sign that calls are being sold. So that's how you want to choose your strike. Pick a heavy open interest. And then at first, if you're a beginner, like for, for example, like I this week personally or next week, I actually went next week. I chose 210 because, you know, it's just a little bit further out than that. Resistance line, give me a little bit more room just in case we happen to break through that resistance at 200. So using the open interest on the call side, look for resistance levels by noticing strikes with higher open interest. We can see that we have resistance at 180 as well as 200. This would make 200 the ideal price to sell, but just in case I went with 210. The closer the strike to the current price, the riskier the play, but the more premium. The further the strike to the current price, the safer the play, but the more premium. Okay, choose to try. My kids are crying if you hear that, sorry. Choosing an expiration date. This is where we can use volume to see how many retailers fell for the hype. So if you're one of those people that keeps believing every news article that keeps coming out, you need to stop doing that. That is exactly how they make premium. So this is where we can use volume to see how many retailers fell for the hype or expecting a run based off news, social media, or other means. So ideal markers for this week are going to be, again, that 200 marker, and that 180 marker, because that's our highest levels of volume. The closer the expiration to the current price, the safer the play, but less premium. The further the strike to the current price, the riskier the play, but more premium. I should say expiration, sorry. So the closer the expiration, the less riskier because it expires sooner. And if it expires worthless, you make all your money, or all your premium. The further out it is, the more chance that price has to go up to that strike, so the riskier the play is, plain and simple. Now, selling the call. Once you identify a strike and an expiration, now we sell the call. Go into the options chain for the strike and the date that we just chose. 
and open the trading window. Look for buy call and change it to sell call on most platforms. It should turn red in most cases. Uh, if you don't have the date you want, make sure that the strike and the date is what you want. And then the amount of premium received as buying power that you're going to get in your account will always equal the price you sell the call for. This is my own personal account. So you'll, this is exactly how it's going to look. And this is Weeble, by the way. Uh, may look a little bit different in other, other uh, applications. But you're going to see your cover stock here. I ignore this one. I just pay attention to these two. You're going to have your 100 shares that you put up as collateral. You're going to have your sold call underneath that. You'll notice on the sold call that it's going to be negative whatever the collateral is that you got or the premium. So, for example, I bought mine at $167 is what I sold it for, right? So that's why you see $166.97 options buying power in my account because that's the premium I received for selling this call at that price. Now, since the time I sold it, GameStop's price went down. So now the call is only worth $157.50. So if I bought it back, guess what? I just made $10 hairs. But hey, that's 10 bucks I didn't have before. And the only thing I used to get that 10 bucks was shares that I'm just holding on to. So it's not like you're giving up these shares. You're just saying, hey, I bet you these settled shares that if this price doesn't go here, I'm going to take all this money. And they're like, done. You're betting against retail. You're betting, you're betting against retail that's not as aware as we are. And you're betting on retail that doesn't get the fact that news is hype for this reason to sell options. So keep that in mind. So buying the call back, this is important. If something happens, if major news drops or the price starts to creep back up, you can buy your sold call back at any time and close the position as long as you have the funds to cover it. That is critical. So let's say you buy a call uh, you you sell a call at hundred bucks. You sell it at hundred bucks. The call goes all the way down to 20 cents a share. You just made, you know, 80% return on that. But all of a sudden, uh oh, we start to get a pop and it starts to go back up. You can buy that call back anytime. You know, if, if, if it goes down and you start to see it come back up, you can buy it back before it reaches dead even. That way, at least you get to keep some money. For example, if I were to buy this call back that I sold earlier today, I'd make 10 bucks and nothing happens. I get the, I get the 10 bucks instantly. I can sell another call whenever I want. And you can do it as many times as you want, as long as you have the shares. So keep that in mind. So to buy back the, the, the call, simply click on the short leg in your positions window. And then you're going to choose buy to close. So you'll see here, you'll, you'll click the short side of it. And then once in there, you'll hit buy to close. And then you would make the difference back if you happen to be buying it for less than you paid for. Congratulations, you're now hedged and are making money off of others hyping their life savings into calls while you're smarter and more aware and patient and sit back and enjoy the premium. In essence, selling calls is a great strategy to use after a decent run up, especially for GameStop. Because we all know when Jimmy runs, it doesn't run again for a while, leaving that time in between of max pain room to sell calls while others are wasting money buying calls. Now, this is where it gets badass because let's say you get it down, you're selling calls, you sell calls three weeks in a row, and you make 500 bucks in premium. Well, guess what? Now you can turn around and use that premium and buy long calls on a dip. It's the perfect setup. You'll learn to use open interest eventually as markers to identify strike prices and expiration dates. Um, it's really plain and simple, guys. I mean, you know, just take it slow, um, give it a shot. And uh, just make sure at all costs, make sure that you're protected and making sure you have enough money just in case it goes against you because you wouldn't want it to hit the strike price and have to pay per hand out. That's the biggest risk. So when starting out, my highest recommendation would be to start as far farthest out in the money or out of the money as you could go. So as far, far out out of the money as you can go, if you may only be making a few dollars, but at least you see how the process works. So it basically you've all been on that end when you've been hoping and praying to God that your options are going to, something's going to happen. It's going to pop and they're not going to expire worthless. Imagine being on the other end, being the guy getting paid for them to expire worthless. That could be you. That's what we're holding for. And this is how to put your shares to work and make a little money and have a little fun while we're waiting at your own risk. Take care.